Good morning, it's me again. I'm at Golden Motorcycles and Sporting Cars today. Some vintage bikes and vintage cars. I uh, hope you're going to enjoy the video. Anthony's going to show me around and uh, tell me what he's got in stock and what he wants to sell and what he wants to keep for himself. But I hope you enjoyed it. A bit different from tractors I know or farming, but something I'm sure our viewers will enjoy watching. So I hope you enjoy. See you in a little while. Right, good morning, Anthony of Golden Motorcycles. Uh, the sporting vehicles? Golden Motorcycles, yeah. There you go. It. And what made you get into this ho hobby come, pastime come um, business? It, it started with my dad, uh, as oh. a lot of these things do. Um, he was a bit of a car collector, a bit of a petrol head. Um, and um, so I always had cars in the family. Um, but it really started because he bought me a, a little Ital Jet motocross bike when I was about eight years old. Yep. And that was it. I got on this thing and you rode, it, it, for rode it, it to death. Right. Loved it. Um, started racing in motocross. Uh, and then just went up through the ranks. And then, and then you know, as I got older, um, I started to see a business in buying and selling stuff. Um, didn't always work for myself, worked for other people um, within the trade. I worked in modern motorcycle business for many years. I was with Harley Davidson for 11 years. Oh, really? Uh, I worked for a big London auction company, Classic Car Sales there, yeah. um, which I, I ran for, for about seven years. Um, and then, you know, in between that was always buying and selling and mucking around with bikes and cars and. Yeah. You know, you just, it's in the blood, isn't it? It is. Do you, do you ever feel like you don't want to sell them? Um, there's certain stuff that I get every now and then, and, and I really like it. I, but, you know, the, the, one, the one good thing about running the business the way I do is that because we, we tend to own most of the stock, so I get the opportunity to uh, drive or ride something that I've never had before and that's a real buzz for me oh, fantastic. but it also yeah. makes me help selling it because if I get something I've never had before I need to know what it's like so I'll jump on it and I'll ride it or I'll, or, or, or I'll drive it for a bit um, and that helps because if it breaks down then I can fix it exactly and uh, you've got quite a collection of Norton's BSAs and Triumphs and God knows what else what is your most possessed what would you what would you say is your favourite motorcycle? Gosh, that's a hard thing because I've had so many bikes. I mean, I love my Harleys. You know, I spent a lot of time with Harleys, um, yep. working on them, um, running dealerships. Um, I've got a couple of rare ones. I have an XR750, right. uh, which I've had for a long time, which I did a little bit of flat track racing on once. Um, I'd never sell it because it's, it's just a monster and I love riding it, although I don't get much use out of it. Um, what else have I got? I've got. Uh, Perhaps we can walk round your collection. Yeah. Shall we? Shall we have a walk round? I mean, you I can mean, start it, and I'll, we, and I'll follow you around. My, my my sort of day to day ride really is is that KTM at the back. Oh, well, that's a bit new for. Um, but that's that's because it's just big and convenient and easy to go. Yep. Um, but I sort of cut my teeth riding riding you know old British. Twins, Bonnevilles, and yeah, you know, because when I was a kid, they were they weren't very expensive. I mm. mean, all my mates had RD two fifties, and 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 you know, I I bought a Bonneville for fifty quid, and and kept it going for years, yeah, and, and had a laugh with it, you know. So mm. I kind of I kind of got a thing for those kinds of bikes. Um, I like them. I think the old fampers we used to yeah, call them. Single because, cinders fampers. Uh, because they were fun and they weren't they weren't expensive. And, no, and, you, know, and you ain't got to race it long in them. You just poodle along, yeah, can't you? Yeah. And enjoy the, the country air. Absolutely. And enjoy the ride. I see you've got a triumph or so over here. Let's have a walk, wander over here. This this is this actually is a, a bit of a special one. This is a this is a, a, a TT Bonneville. So they were they were built specifically for the American market um, as as uh, customer race bikes. Um, they've got slightly longer forks, uh, a slightly tweaked engine. Um, it's what people call a desert sled. Um, it's kind of been made famous by by Steve McQueen and um, uh, oh, really? and and um, and his stunt riders, the, the the guys that used to ride with him, 
um, they used to race these bikes a lot you know uh, not so much in motocross but but sort of endurance desert racing yeah that um, wasn't the one he done the famous jump was no it? no From that bike is stuff. about actually um that bike is uh, that's actually a trophy it's a very similar to this but a single carburetor right. um so these are quite special these are quite rare they didn't make that many of them um and they're quite valuable get up close and personal to it in very good uh condition isn't it do you did it come like this or yeah it did no it came like this um it came from it was restored in the states and then and then came to the uk uh about six years ago okay and behind us we've got an ajs uh yeah um my sort of big passion is british v twin motorcycles i, I yes. really love twins um, they've got a noise of their own aren't they yeah i just i mean all v twins really are, are kind of a thing for me but um, this is quite a rare thing it's a model two um ajs and matchless became the same company about this period which is in the, in the mid 1930s so their bikes are very similar yeah but the ajs version like this is is much rarer and this is an export model i've never had one of these before Oh really? So what makes it different between an export and uh... It had this sort of rather curious handlebar arrangement which you can see, very extended handlebars and, and, and footrests which are very common on early motorcycles in the US. Yeah. You know, Harley Model J's etc etc all had that, all had this kind of arrangement. Um, this was destined for the US, I mean this would have been sent to America originally. Oh, okay. Um, and it, it was back here in England and restored by the National Motorcycle Museum not long ago. Okay, and you picked it up off of them, did you? I or? did, I bought it from them, I know them very well, I do a bit of business with them. Okay, and moving on, and um, what have we got here? A brough. Okay, so this is this is a, a, a new brough superior, um, it's one we're just working on at the moment. I became the importer for brough superior motorcycles. Yes, because it's an old name, but that's a new engine. It so. is, yeah, um, resurrected about, about five years ago. Um, the new bikes were started to be built about three years ago. Um, new engine, their design, a uh, completely new bike. A modern interpretation of a, of a classic. Okay, and alongside it we've got an actual Mustang as well. Oh, that's a Mustang, yeah. Sorry, we drifted off from bikes. We'll come, back to, we'll come back to that eventually. And a Ducati. Yeah, uh, that's one I've just sold. Um, 900 Super Sport. Um, everyone should have a Ducati Club bevel in their collection at some stage. Really? Yeah, phenomenal thing. You've got to have one of those at least once in your life. Well, it's like my old dad said, if you're about to turn your toes up and if you haven't done something you wish you'd done, there you, you can regret it, isn't it? Yeah. So you've got to actually try and do everything in life that you want to do. <laughs> okay then. And we've got a Maui Geezer. Is it a Maui Geezer or a Maui? No, the Guzzi. Guzzi? Yeah. I'll call it Geezer, I can't. So, and you, you, obviously you've been quite a, a known name over the years, and you buy and sell motorbikes on a regular basis. And you say, because I've got a few American viewers. Yeah. And uh, you export to America as yeah, well, do you? Yeah, I all the stuff in the US. Really? Um, I've had a long association with Brough Superiors for many years because I had my first brough in in about 1989 um, and so I think what happened was people got to know my business as, as being vintage brough dealer yeah um, and I sell a lot of the, a lot of vintage bruffs to the, to the States oh, okay. um, in fact the last two that I had went to America um, and I, I mean, I'm not buying so much in America these days because it's just not worth it, but I still have a lot of customers over there. Mm. New Zealand and Australia as well, big market for oh, us. Really? So yeah. how would you export them? Would you cut, uh, cart them up or something? Yeah, yeah, we create them. Yeah, create them we don't yeah. do it here. I and mean, there's a shipping company that I use, really okay. good. Um, they, I mean, I handle all the paperwork and uh, they collect the bikes, so they crate them up and they send them off. Fantastic. I spotted the Norton Commanders. Yeah, yeah, quite full of Commanders. Yes. Nice, nice bike to ride super comfy age wise uh these are these are early 70s the 72 and 73 one's a 750 one's an 850 same model uh, it's a bit crammed in them I, I i dare not walk past them i'm afraid i'm going to scratch them or something but the 750 and the 850 as you said yeah 
And these was obviously from Britain, or did you buy them from um, America? Yeah, I both bought them here, but the 750 came from Spain originally. Oh, really? Yeah. Just the Norton name just rings hard and fast inside the yeah, yeah. body, doesn't it? And a little BSA tucked away, is that a Bantam or something? Uh, no, it's a B31. Um, it's, a, it's a trials bike. Oh, okay, a friend of mine's got what, something similar to that. I'm going to try and nudge over to the back green. Right, Anthony, Harley Davidson, your passion. Yeah. And this is a little. It's it's a it's a modern interpretation of of an XR. So um, we built this bike on a 2003 model Harley 1200 Sportster Sport, which is probably about the best Sportster that the factory made. Yeah. Uh, and then got the XR kit from various places in America. Um, put it on there, um, had the wheels made, um, and just sort of altered it around to make it look like it is now. I've got to say, every one of your bikes in here are in, in such good fettle. Thank you. And the Trident. Yeah, lovely old Tridents. Much maligned, but good bikes. The first British sports Oil bike. Leaks. That, that, that was their problem, wasn't it? Yeah, well, you know, as you can see, there's a bit, of, there's a bit dropping under most of this stuff, but you know, that's just the way they are, unfortunately. Yeah. An era. Um, early seventies. When Triumph was at there. Yeah. Would you say they're they best era? I think I think do you know something. They were probably past their peak by the time by the time this came out. Really? I mean, the factory was in financial problems in, in by 73, there was a lock-in and, you know, by that stage, you know, with the introduction of the CV750 in 69, the death knell had certainly been sounded for the been British motorcycle been industry. good and proper, isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah, a shame really, but that's what happens when innovation comes in. Progress, as we all don't like calling it, but it is progress in it. A couple of Ducatis, and these are. Uh, so this is this is the 916 SPS, um, which is which is you know one of the most iconic bikes of the modern era. Um, Ducati changed the mould in which bikes were designed and built with, with this motorcycle, not just because the engine was phenomenal, but the whole concept and the design of it. I mean. Really, um, most modern motorcycles have emulated this bike in one way or another for the last 20 years. Um, and even with this one, which is which is a this is a 1098 S Ducati alongside it, still a very similar looking thing. Um, the mould is here, though, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. But but um, it's it's a it's an iconic design, and and, um, uh, and as I said, much copied. From, from uh, by other motorcycle manufacturers. A single swing arm on the back end, wasn't it? And uh... yeah, well, it was quite radical in its time. I mean, yes. the, the main thing really is, is you know, putting the exhaust underneath the seat. I mean, yeah. every bike, you know, every Suzuki Yamaha tried to copy this afterwards um, because it it, it 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 made a much cleaner line to the motorcycle. Yep. Um, and and they still do it today. Yes, they do. And what were we? got behind us here okay this is a this is a, a trusty triton um which is you know your archetypal british cafe racer obviously in the 50s when these things were were around people started modifying their motorcycles a lot um, they would take a frame from one bike and an engine from another and try to build what they could as the best motorcycle out of the components um, so you know the ton up boys as they were called in the 50s were were particularly fond of these Norton featherbed frames because they were very rigid um, but often thought that the Triumph engine um, the, the the 650 and the 500 cc twins were, were a bit better so um, one particular guy was very famous for, for putting these things together a guy called Dave Deegins and um, and much copied um, really nice bikes people still buy them a lot it's still very popular and the uh Mark in the tank, is that supposed to be there? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's so you don't crunch your fingers when you, oh, when you, when when you, you swing it around. When you swing it around. Um, right, and obviously, look the oil mark on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> obviously, when I will. Well, that's how you know it's got oil in it. Yeah. So when you don't drip, 
there's no oil. Yeah, exactly. It's a sort of it's a self-testing system for oil. Fantastic. And moving on. Okay, um, this is a Veloset Thruxton. Um, so um, one of one of the sort of more sporty bikes of, of the era. Um, British motorcycles post-war were very much about single cylinder, and the the the. The, the epitome of that was a 500cc because obviously 500cc were um, what they used for GP racing. Yep. So this would be your customer road road stroke race bike. Um, so Veloset had this, obviously Norton had their Manx. Um, you know, quite quick really for for its day. Um, quite quite a thing. I mean, um, you know, reasonably rare, and quite valuable. Uh, I, I have to say that I'm not a great fan of Velocets. I've cracked my ankle on more Velocets than, than virtually any other motorcycles. They're an absolute sod to start, but when they go, they really do go. Yeah, that is kickstart, but that's what. Yeah, that's what it's about. It is, but there's it, it, no relying on starter motors. No, thing, no, well, it? that's the problem. Is that everyone have got a little bit too, uh, a bit too used to that? Yeah, a bit too. Um, yeah, and. Well, in front of me there. So this, this is, is an old one. What, this what? is a lovely old bruff. This is a this is a an SS80 from 1936. Um, pretty reminiscent of the first bruff I ever owned. In fact, um, unrestored, uh, but a nice thing. It runs. It rides. Um, but people don't want unrestored vehicles, don't they? They do, they do, but I think that because the values of motorcycles of this kind have come up so much, that undoubtedly this will go to someone who wants to restore it. For sure. It's a cracking looking bike. I mean, it's something, in some cases, it's a bit like my old tractors. I don't want to take off the age. Yeah. I want to leave the age as it is. Yeah, I, I kind of, I'm kind of with you on that. I mean, I, I do like originality on these things. It's the wear and the tear. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah. Really. Old, old cars need to look like old cars. Yes. Old bikes the same. So. You know, why change something? It's 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 got its it's in its working colours, and it just looks so awesome in my point of view. Yep. You know, it might not be up to everybody's taste, but for me, it's just everything you need. This is something you wouldn't see on a modern cycle. No. No. <laughs> That's a suicide. A head splitter. Yes, that would definitely. Um, oh God! I can see road fund uh, license. Yeah, it's probably it? an old tax disc on it somewhere. 1967. There's a great story surrounds this bike, and that is that uh, it was sold after the Second World War to a pilot who had damaged his arm and his leg bailing out of a plane. And, 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 and so modified, so they actually had a sidecar on it originally, but they changed it to a hand change because he couldn't uh, he couldn't pull a let me come round and pull. He, he, he had a he had a prosthetic leg and, oh, okay. and, and so he couldn't he couldn't push the gear lever down so they they modified this particular model that wouldn't have had a hand change to have a hand change on oh. it um, and as I said, it had a sidecar to stabilize it. I don't know whether the story is true, fantastic history, but it isn't makes it? it makes a nice story. Well, the new owner would be. I mean, surely you'd be able to write that down for somebody. Oh yeah, no, I have. I mean, it's 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 it was sold in the Oxford area and it remained in 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 around Oxfordshire pretty much all its life, and that's where we found it. Oh, you found it? Yeah. Oh, fantastic! Was it in a barn stall or yeah, something? It came to me from from a to a chap who 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 purchased it. Um, didn't really know what to do with it, but um, you know, he then rang us up and said that he had got it. Uh, he he heard a story that some 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 family had had this bike stuffed under a load of old blankets and books and everything in their garage, and he went round and, and found it and um, and then you know asked us to sort of get it going. Fantastic, and it is up for sale. Obviously. It is, yeah, yeah. All these bikes, um, all the cars, and everything else are on our website at www.anthonygodin.co.uk Okay, well I will take a picture of the uh, your sign at the end of it and put it on okay. the end of it. And moving on again, a Vincent now that. Yep. Another old British bike, isn't so it? So I've got a few Vincents here at the moment, as you can see. Uh, this one's, a, I've, got, I've got two Black Shadows uh, and two Rapides. So similar bikes, but the Black Shadow is a slight factory tweak. Okay. Um, and a little bit more iconic, I'm sure everyone would have heard of a Vincent Black Is that an hand throttle on top of that as well? Uh, no, yeah, the, well these are, these are all, these are all hand controls. Um, so you have, um, 
Uh, this this actually is one is the uh, advance and retard, and one's the choke. Ah, okay, sorry, yeah. So and then you have um, you have your normal uh, brake lever, clutch, clutch lever, and yeah. then your decompressor here. Have you got a decompressor as well? Yeah, that helps you start it because um, large capacity V twins are quite hard to kick over. Mm. Uh, so you need to use a decompressor just to get yourself going at yeah. the very beginning. And the one beside it? One size, it's a very similar bike. Um, oh, it's got a hand but it's, gear but it's lever that, as well. That, no, that's actually, that's actually a, to, to get it up onto the side the centre. Oh, side. really? Yeah. Um, same kind, same bike. There's only a couple of years between them, but this one's been modified with different brakes and upgraded carburetor system. Fantastic. I'll, I'll shoot around the back and just have a quick look at these ones. I've got an amazing collection of motorcycles. I didn't realise there was these places to the back. And this is HRD. Well, Vincent, the Vincent were, were originally called Vincent HRD because they were um, two companies that became one oh, as, okay. as time went on. And then they dropped the HRD in about 1952. So this is the, the, the one of the earliest bikes. Yeah, it's say? slightly earlier. This is this is a, a series. Um, C, but an early series C, uh, with slightly different forks as you can see. This is a bit of a framework configuration there, isn't it? Yeah. It's not like the modern aluminium or struts and all sorts. Fantastic collection. Now moving on again, I can see we've got some lovely bikes upstairs. Can we venture yeah. upstairs? I'll follow you. They're sort of vintage, them old oil cans, aren't they? Yeah. Obviously a modern up uptake on them. So we keep a few bikes up here as well, because we tend to run out of space at this time of year, with that, especially when the weather's very nice. Yes. Um, so we've got a couple of BSAs up here. Oh, These are stunning. Rocket Gold Star replicas. Absolutely stunning. So they're a brand new bike, basically. Yes. No, these are these are from the from the fifties. Oh, really? Um, but they are they are they're, they are a standard A sixty five rocket uh, or super rocket that's been modified to make it look more like a rocket gold star, which was a, a, a um, limited edition bike that was built from sixty two to sixty three. No disc brakes on these, are they? No. It looks to me they've just come out of the factory or into the showroom. Yeah. That's the condition of well, every one, motorcycle in this This one shop. was restored fairly recently. I'm not quite sure about that one, but that one was done by a chap who I know locally. He did it but not well, not that long ago. Brilliant. And you said you got chaps who actually... Um... Yeah, I mean, we've got a couple of guys that come in and do some... We're not doing restoration work anymore because we're too busy, but we, we're sort of, you know, stuff that comes in that we, that we sell, we, we go through it, make sure it's up on its feet. That's well, obviously a modern take because yeah, it's got the disc brakes. Yeah, I mean, from time to time I get modern bikes and part exchange for them. Yeah. So. Oh, without modern bikes, we'd, we wouldn't have a younging for older bikes, would we? Younging, is that the right word? No. <laughs> and now with Norton there? Yeah, uh, that's a Model 7 Dominator, quite a, quite a, quite a rare one. A Dominator? And then beside it is a, is a 1926 Model 18. Ooh. Quite again, quite a rare thing. And age of something like this? Uh, 26 that bike. 1926. Yeah. Just for the viewers, what sort of um, what are we talking about uh, monetary wise on a bike? This I don't. I, I'm not going to obviously argue to a. Uh, but well, what sort of bracket would we well, say? Say you like know this? anything of this anything of this age really tends to be anywhere between 18 and 30 grand um, in, in the modern market. Um, that one's actually on the site for 25. That's not expensive really when you look at the, the cost of modern motorcycles and the age we live in. Sure. You know, I mean a tractor, a, a new tractor is over 100,000 pounds now, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you can't have as much fun as a tractor as you no. can with one of these. <laughs> well, not unless you're a farmer, but I mean, yeah. Yeah, they, you know, they've been a reasonably good pump for, for people for a few years. I mean, I think the values have been going up relatively steadily, mm -hmm. and, I, and I really don't think going backwards, even when the market's a bit flat. Yeah, 
Um, again, we're into the Harley Davidsons. Yeah, these are another couple of my bikes. Um, this is, you said you didn't keep bikes, though. Well, I've got a few. <laughs> I mean, I've had these for a long time. That's my XR750, which I've had for a long time. That's original, is it? Yep, yep, original bike. I used to replace that. Oh, really? And that's a modern the turf that um, this is This is an XR1000, which is which is the, actually the factory homologation of that particular bike, but I started to modify it to make it look like that one because I don't ride that one too much anymore. Okay. But I haven't really got around to finishing the front end of it as yet. I love the car where it's situated right up there, tucked underneath your legs. Yeah. People that are bike enthusiasts will know these bikes very well. They were, they were raced extensively in, in the US in flat tracking series and, and you know, won virtually everything that they, they ever entered, but became more famous as the motorcycle that Evil Knievel used to ride oh, really? uh, when doing stunts. Yeah, and the olden we passed? Uh, this, is, this, is a, this is actually a bruff. This is quite a rare bruff. It's a, it's a, um, a 515 or a junior. Um, Can I get close to yeah, it? Sorry, sorry. Yeah. social distancing and everything. Age-wise again? 1925. Really? Superb. I know in the States they've got quite a following with the old rough motorcyclists. All new pipes on it, all chromed up. A stunning piece of engineering, isn't it? Absolutely stunning. Fantastic. Like I said, you've got a sidecar. Or oh, bits of a sidecar. That's, that's, that's actually a, a rough sidecar. Oh, right. Is this a showpiece or is it a... No, I found that up against the wall of some bloke's garage about a year ago. Um, he knew it was a rough because of the insignia on the front, but... Uh, that's what I'm just saying. But... Quite a rare thing. This is what's known as a petrol tube sidecar. Because what you can actually do is fill this part here yeah. full, of, full of petrol. Oh, and, and it was actually used as an expansion tank, so you could run a fuel line off of it into here. So if you're a bit low on fuel, you could tap it out the inside of the frame. Now that's strange, because the modern drag bikes, their fuel tank is the frames. Yeah. So from old to new, it's, it's yeah. amazing, isn't it? And this is a bizarre creature. What is this? Well, I, this came to me last week. It's. It's, it's a bit of an odd thing. It's a cross between a matchless and a BSA. Yeah, match. <laughs> that is a strange little thing. Is it a trial bike or something, is it? It was just built as a sort of fun, flat tracker type thing. Yeah. Um, 350cc matchless engine uh, in a BSA A65 frame. Fantastic, fantastic. And we're on to our customised Commando with the uh, customised tank. Still original though, isn't it? Yep. With the drum brakes and uh, everything, and the BSA in the background. And what BSA are we looking at here? Uh, that's a Thunderbolt from from the early 1970s, 71. Um, construction changed on them slightly uh, as later bikes. They became what's known as unit construction, where the engine and gearbox were fixed together, yeah. as opposed to something like this, which is which is uh, where the engine cases and the gearbox were separate. Yeah. Most British bikes, as they as they got to the 70s, turned into unit construction. Yeah, okay. Just a big around there, that. So you say everything's on your website anyway. Yes, so the viewers can actually have a look at these bikes on the website. Yeah, they can, yeah. They get bored with my video. <laughs> and uh, thanks for your time. We're going to pop downstairs and I'll see you've got a few down in your showroom I'd like to show the viewers okay, as well. Okay, no problem. Thank you. And this is where you keep your, your new bruffs. Yeah, this is these are the new models that have not long been out. This is a Pendine. Um, so, same engine and gearbox, slightly different frame but obviously a, a different take. And would you, do you sell many of these? Um, I've only sold a couple of the Pendine models, but, but the, as a factory not making a ton, um, these, are the only, these are the last two that I'm gonna get this year um, because production is relatively limited. I mean, they're handmade. 
Oh, of course, yeah. yes, you can see that, can't you? And uh, price wise, uh, these are coming in now at fifty-three and a half thousand pounds on the road. That's on the road in this country, obviously. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So in the states, it would be. Well, unfortunately, they're not for sale in America at the moment. Oh, you couldn't you couldn't export them? Do you? No. Um, well, I probably could if if uh, if someone found a state they could get one registered in, but they've not been homologated for for uh, for the US as such. Oh, okay. That is in the plan. I mean, new brass have only been in production for a few years, and so the factory are concentrating on European sales. Yeah. Um, we've got outlets started in Australia last month. Uh, as well, I would think something like that would go mad in this in the states. And we've got tucked around the corner. So this is this is probably the jewel of, of the your collection that I've got right now. Really, um, super rare, super exotic, rough SS hundred from nineteen twenty five. In showroom, well, more than showroom condition, isn't it? It is like, well, stunning to every degree. Probably the most exotic motorcycle you're likely to see out there in the current market. And that's a, a bizarre headlight, on, and it, I've heard about them. They are a, they use a carbon or something. Uh, acetylene is acetylene. A, yeah. Basically, um, you would back in the day, and I wouldn't recommend doing it now. Uh, you would put calcium carbide in this in this container here and fill it up with water and turn it on and it would drop down the water would drop into it and produce acetylene gas which would which on a small valve would come out you then open this aperture and light it in here and hopefully it didn't explode <laughs> man that's a way too dangerous to use now yeah so i would think i think health and safety would uh, put a block on that wouldn't they yeah. yeah but you know you really wouldn't want to ride one of these things in the dark that much anyway no nah, i mean you want to people to see it anyway don't you yeah you would yeah but i mean you know they're very valuable now um and, and this is a particularly valuable one because being uh, an early 1925 um it's a slightly different frame it's the pre-alpine grand sport model um not sure how many of there are in the world but certainly the last count was about 14 um so a pretty rare bike yeah and would you sell it or is this the showroom no no, no. Style? It, it came to me from a, from a customer um i've been asked to sell it it's on the site at the moment oh, okay. um that would go to america wouldn't it surely i i've got already got interest in the states on on this bike at the moment from the yeah from the states so uh tell me whereabouts are you in Kent, you're okay. in Kent in UK, obviously. Yeah, so I'm located between Tunbridge Wells and Maidstone. Yeah. Um, on the Alders Industrial Estate. Um, but uh, it's probably best if people want to give us a call before they come over, because I'm not always here. No. And it's better for, for people to to, um, to give me a call and make an appointment. But, you know, as I said, all the stuff's on the website. Our contact details are on their email address, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. That is something you eat quite easy to get hold of yeah, especially absolutely. from the states or australia or somewhere yeah well thanks ever so much andrew for your time we're gonna have a quick buzz around your cars but it's gonna as i say it's second best to me but we'll have a quick look anyway all right many thanks so,